Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today we have a super fun video for you. It is design trends I hate but most people love. This is a follow-up episode to the previous episode which we are turning into a full-blown series. It's all about design trends I love but most people hate. So now we're kind of just poking fun at these popular design trends or key design features that have become a part of the design vernacular. We'll be talking about some design trends that have gained a lot of popularity, why I think people like it, why I don't love it, and what you should be using instead. So without further ado, let's jump right into this list. The first item on my list of a design trend I hate but most people love is luxury vinyl flooring. Now we're talking about luxury vinyl planks, luxury vinyl tile. You might know it as LVP or LVT. Luxury vinyl planks are a really affordable option if you love the look of wood but you're not about to spend a whole lot of money on it. People love it because it's affordable, it's durable, it's impervious to moisture. It comes in so many different styles, colors, finishes. It can surely fit within your budget and there's probably a style that will suit your family's needs. But here's a list of reasons why I don't love luxury vinyl planks or tile. Luxury vinyl tile can dent and scratch or scuff especially from heavy appliances or furniture. If you have have a refrigerator that's sitting on it or a large heavy sectional and once you move this weighty object you can actually see the dent of the object on the surface of the tile. Just because it's resistant to scratches and scuffs it doesn't mean that it's completely impervious to it. Other problems can include crumpling at the edges, especially if the adhesive has loosened from the tile. If you are installing a click lock type of vinyl plank, you have to make sure that the substrate is even or it could lift the floor's edges and joints over time. Due to the materials used in the production of luxury vinyl tile, it will sometimes emit various levels of VOCs, that's volatile organic compounds, into the air for some time after installation. These toxic chemicals can be harmful to the air quality of your environment once it's installed, and it actually has the possibility of causing respiratory problems over time. I'm a huge advocate of sharing finishes and materials that add value to your home over time. Even though you might not sell your property anytime soon or you're already in your forever home, I don't think luxury vinyl tile really has any resale value. It's important for you to recognize as a homeowner that you might be spending less on the materials and labor of installation right now for luxury vinyl tile, but over time that actually can decrease the return on your investment. Luxury vinyl planks might seem to you like they're really hot in the design market right now. You can go to a hardware store and everyone's kind of trying to hawk a luxury vinyl tile or plank. There's very little learning curve. It's really quick and easy to install. It's easy to cut. It's easy to manipulate. So of course it's a contractor's dream flooring material. But for me, I just don't love the look. The top of the vinyl planks are really just a digital imprint and reproduction of what real wood looks like. So it never can quite look like the real thing to me. If you love the look of wood but you don't quite have the budget for a higher end laminate or engineered hardwood or a hardwood, the real thing, then you might want to try tile. Going for a large scale tile immediately makes your home feel more luxurious. Instead, look for 12 by 24 tile options, 18 by 18 or even 24 by 24. The larger the scale of the tile, the more luxurious your home will look even in small spaces. Next on the list is wall to wall shiplap. Shiplap gained popularity and became a really huge design moment, especially when Joanna Gaines featured it in every single episode of Fixer Upper on HGTV. Now, I love Joanna Gaines. I really think that she's an incredible designer. But once you see something over and over, it really loses its appeal and becomes tired over time. Now, if you currently have shiplap in your home, more power to you. I feel like there should be a design intent to every single finish that you put in your space. If you have a modern farmhouse type of aesthetic, I love the way shiplap looks. I love it in homes filled with a lot of light and really high ceilings. I really feel like there's a time and place for everything. But what I don't love about shiplap is when you have a really small space, you have short ceilings, and now you're installing these horizontal planks wall to wall. Think of it like horizontal stripes. Now vertical stripes raise your eye up and visually make anything look taller and longer. On the flip side, horizontal stripes make everything look short and stubbier. So you always want to consider the type of space it is, whether or not the room gets a ton of light, your design aesthetic, and see if shiplap is right for you. If you're looking to add visual interest on your walls because your style is really minimal and that's kind of why you love shiplap, consider panel molding or even a board and batten type of trim. 
You can install panel molding directly to drywall and have it painted the exact same color as your walls. Not only does this create a three-dimensional effect, you can even use the insets of each panel to highlight artwork, install wall covering whether or not it's textured, printed, or patterned, or use the molding to frame out really beautiful lighting like wall sconces. Board and batten trim work really can stand on its own. I can see a floor to ceiling installation painted in the same color as all of your walls or painted in a contrasting color to become a feature wall in your space. Think of your design intent of the space and install a feature on the walls that actually highlights all of the architectural details of your space and helps to visually expand the space. The next design trend I hate but most people love is marble looking quartz and porcelain. Now of course I understand why you might be choosing to use this material in your home. Not only is marble expensive, it's porous which means it needs constant resealing to maintain it and upkeep it. Quartz and porcelain are almost indestructible, they're very low maintenance, they're non-porous, it's so easy to clean but there is a really huge difference on the type of digital imprint that you're looking for. Quartz is typically fabricated with that marble looking vein and pattern onto the material. You can kind of see that penetration of the pattern and the veining woven throughout the thickness of the quartz. Whereas for porcelain, that marble look is imprinted on the surface of the slab. It looks like a digital photocopy. Now, if you're looking for something that mimics the natural look of stone, but you don't want to pay that premium, you really have to pay attention to what that digital reproduction looks like. If you don't have the budget for real natural stone, try specifying quartz or porcelain in a really uniform color, and instead apply that budget to a natural stone backsplash instead. I love pairing a really simple countertop, whether or not it's in the island or your perimeter, with a statement making backsplash. After all, the backsplash really is the first thing you see since it's lining the walls and it's not a horizontal surface. The next design trend I hate but most people love are plantation shutters. I get a lot of flack for this and honestly hate is a really strong word. I really don't hate anything in design. I know that there's a functionality to any type of design feature that you might put in your space. I understand why people love plantation shutters. There's a thermal quality to it that can't be beat. You have the flexibility of allowing light to filter the space. You can control it with the different louvers. They're custom made to fit your space and they look expensive because really they are expensive. But here's the main reason of why I don't love plantation shutters. To me, they're really not that functional. You can't put any furniture in front of plantation shutters or else you won't be able to operate the windows. The only time you can open your windows really wide and let all of that beautiful natural light in is without anything in its way. From the exterior of the home looking in, it almost looks like an institution. There are so many different window treatments out there that would not only soften the look of the home, but it'll also add a lot of color, a lot of pattern, and a lot of visual interest to your space. My favorite types of window treatments are shears or shades layered with drapery panels. Whether or not you choose to install a decorative rod or if they're on a concealed transom rod, that is completely up to you. From the inside, your windows look soft, they could look gauzy, they could look modern, they're very transitional, and it looks very high-end and luxurious. You can install shades for privacy, really beautiful shears to let that natural daylight filter through, and the color of your drapery panels can really pull together the entire look of your design. So the next time you're deliberating on whether or not you want to install plantation shutters in your space, think about your design intent, your budget, and your needs. The next design trend on my list that I hate and most people love are barn doors. Like I said before, I really don't hate anything. I understand the functionality of why people love barn doors. You might have an opening that doesn't really have the clearance to open and shut a door, but you do have the wall space to kind of slide a door back and forth. The reason I hate barn doors is because number one, do you live in a barn? Do you live in an actual farmhouse? That's really the only time this industrial type of exposed track and a sliding door fits the bill. I don't like barn doors because they don't have any acoustical value. Even after you close the door, you can still hear everything that's happening inside. You have the visual privacy, but you really don't have that acoustical privacy. I also don't like the fact that you really can't address or put anything on that huge wall after you slide the barn door back and forth. You can't have any functional electrical outlets there. You really can't have any artwork placed on that wall. So what gets to me is a huge blank space on the side of a sliding barn door.
Another design trend I hate that most people love is the painted accent wall. I actually made a full blown video on accent walls, do's and don'ts, the common design mistakes that people make when it comes to accent walls. And the biggest design mistake that most people make is really just painting a wall for the heck of it. You think that by painting a single wall in your space, a contrasting color from everything else in your home brings more attention to it. But to me, it actually detracts from the value of the room. Think about the visual impact that you're trying to make. Sometimes it's about the furniture. Sometimes it's about the lighting. Sometimes it's about a beautifully styled space that creates that wow moment. It's never usually about one single painted accent wall, especially in a contrasting color that really has nothing to do with the rest of the space. My top designer's tip when it comes to an accent wall is number one, don't call it an accent wall. Allow that wall to become a feature of your room if you're trying to highlight it and think about the one thing that room needs to make it feel more cohesive. Instead of a painted accent wall, think about featuring the ceiling, which I consider the fifth wall in interior design. Think about specifying a really beautiful area rug that helps ground a seating group. Think about a wall of windows and a really gorgeous view and how you're going to address the window treatments that help frame that view. Think about the entire room as a whole and not just one wall that you're gonna slap a coat of paint on it and call it a day. Typically, that's not how a space feels more high-end and luxurious. It's all about the details. And the last design trend on my list that I hate that most people love is white on white kitchens. You recognize it the minute you see it, it is white cabinets on white countertops. To me, the look could feel really boring, really bland, really sterile, especially if the white is not a warm white or an off white. This trend was made popular by minimal design and I understand the minimalist. You might want the lighting to be featured. It might be all about your appliances. White on white kitchens can be very safe, but they can also feel really sterile. If you have a white on white kitchen and you want to play with a little bit of color, try bringing in a different accent with the finishes of your faucets and your lighting. You can mix metals like matte black and raw brass, polished nickel with stainless steel, or maybe bring in some copper and bronze elements in the space. Typically people like white on white kitchens because it feels really clean, it feels really bright and really airy. But the key to a successful white on white kitchen is how you mix up these finishes. It could be a really beautiful blank slate and a white canvas for you to showcase photography or artwork. But if you're not fully accessorizing the space with all of these little designer details, I would introduce stained cabinets or a really beautiful colored countertop instead. These next few examples show white kitchens with a little splash of color to get you inspired. That's it for today's video, design trends I hate but most people love. What did you think of my list? If you currently have any of these items in your home that you absolutely love, I hope you don't take offense to it. I really just wanna know how it's working for you. If you like this type of content and you want me to talk about more design trends, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if there are any other design trends that you would like my personal opinion on. I would love to open up a fun discussion in the comments below. Share this video and this series with anyone you know who loves interior design as much as we do. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every single Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.